Yo, 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 yo. Hey, we back, we back, we back. They said, where's my hat bear down? Two days out of the game. Two days out of the game. I'll be real. I don't know why I took two days out of the game. Listen, my lighting is still messed up. But listen, we back. Took two days out of the game, fam. I, I was seeing a few pussyos. Fam, I told you, man, innit? My uncle's a Jedi. Saw a few, saw a few guys like Darth Vader's a pussy old and this and that, but I had to take care of business, fam. So that's why I wasn't really active for two days. I had to, I had to take care of some business. But anyways, we back, yeah, we back, we back, we back. No lie, because I streamed for like a whole two weeks in a row. Taking those two days off, it felt weird. It, it felt like. Uh, what am I saying? Yeah, it felt it felt bit weird. I was like, nah, bro, I need to go live. Need to go live, chat some boo. But you know what it is? There wasn't really much to talk about. But oh my days, man. The thing is, I remember the last time. Oh, my lighting is so bad. But I remember the last time I took uh, like two days off. Bro, man came back. Low on the algorithm, had to restart it all from scratch. When I got it back to the top, I took another two days off, fam. I'm a bozo, fam. You know what it is? When there's nothing new to talk about, I don't go live. Because I don't want to repeat the same thing I said on Monday, on Tuesday, yeah. But you know what it is? I've realized with YouTube, if I have to do five days of talking about 10 hog, then so be it, fam. I need to stay, like, top of the algorithm, fam. I can't be taking... Take, taking days off but listen from uh from tomorrow we got a plan i'm gonna i'm gonna try do i'm gonna try do a live and a pre-record every single day the pre-records will be like everyone madrid barca chelsea arsenal it's not just man united because i'll be real i don't want to be a united channel fam i've always said it whenever i started youtube I was like, man, don't want to be a Man United channel, fam. You've got the United channels for that. I don't want to be a United channel. I want to be football. Yeah, I want to be football, fam. Now, of course, I'll do Man United match reviews, but I don't want to be a Man United channel. Like, of course, what a lot of people do is that like, they'll have the United channel, and then, ooh, so basically, if I sit back, it looks better. Hmm. But then again, wait, bring this forward. So, wait, if I sit back... Hey, this looks oh okay. All right, then let's try it like this today. But yeah, so like a lot of people would like have the United channel and then like they'll go do another channel where it's like for more like other teams. I can't be bothered to do that, fam. So you know what? From tomorrow, I've already got a few videos planned. Got a few videos planned, it's just about uh editing them. And I'm putting them out there. So, anyways, you guys need to hit the like on those videos because the only is <coughs> my god, nearly died, bro. The thing is, my live streams do do well, my pre records don't. So, listen, we're all in this together, fam. Anyways, uh, what's my like saying? But I'm like, yo, it is, man. You guys are a one with the likes, man. I don't need to beg for them anymore. Like the the likes, the ratio is always good. So big up everybody in the house, man. Let's see what everybody's saying before, before my monologues start. Yeah. All right. What's what Salman saying? My bro, what are we saying, fam? People hate on Deserby that Brian attack is toothless. All his best plays in the summer. And still only five points behind United. Yeah, I'll be real. Do you know what it is, bro? Listen. Listen. <laughs> The only problem is with the Deserby thing. If Deserby comes to my United, then it goes sideways. I just know I'm going to get cooked. Because, listen, I've done tactical breakdowns on Deserby. Like, I've put, I've, listen, I've put my neck on the line for Deserby. Yeah. Like, bro, Deserby got bent over 4-0, and I'm getting cooked on Twitter for it. The game's the game, isn't it? Yeah, the game is the game. But listen, I'll just put it out there. And I'm going to remember this stream in case anybody tries to cook me in the future, yeah? I've never once said Deserby is my number one. Okay, I've always said Inzaghi's number one for me. Why is Deserby not my one number one? I'm going to do a video on this, yeah? Like, just to put all the questions to bed. 
Deserby defensively, there's a lot of question marks. Yeah. And it's mainly because he's the type of manager that like focuses a lot on like attacking patterns, build up patterns. Like he basically gets his team so good at playing with the ball. But the problem is, especially at Brighton, he doesn't have the players to like dominate the ball for a hundred percent. So you also need to coach your team off the ball. That is where, it's one of the two. Either defensively, he's not the best of managers. Like some managers are just good at attacking. They're not really good at defending. So what they'll do is they'll just sign like animals defensively that can just defend. So they'll sign defenders that are good physically, good technically, uh, players that can read situations well. And they'll just put them out of there and be like, listen, defend. I'm going to coach this team and attack. Or he might go, or like what some managers do, they might go get a coach, a defensive coach. So I'll do attacking, you do defending. Yeah, it's like, it's like Jose, Rui Farrio. That was his defensive guy. Anyways, the point is, the Zerbi at Brighton, whenever he's got implored it, whenever like anyone sat down and praised him, it's never been because, oh, Brighton went to Manchester City and kept a clean sheet. No. Oh, Brighton played against Team A and completely nullified them. No. It's always for the football he plays with possession. Bro, listen, I've said this. Every top manager, I said this with rants, every top manager needs a pragmatic side to them. You can't be or you can't be fully expansive. You can't be fully attacking. That was the prime problem of Brighton today. Don't get me wrong. Mandem rolled up to the uh Olympicano with what's it called? 33-year-old Danny Welbeck up front. Like, you're only as good as your tools in it, yeah? A, workman, a workman's only as good as his toolbox, yeah? Welbeck ass. Matoma and March, his go-to wingers, injured. The drop-off from McAllister and Caicedo to Beleba or Dawood got sold. Anyways, the squad is not that good this year, but I will be real. He should not be losing 4-0. He does need to take a few months out and just focus on making his team. His off-the-ball structure needs a lot of work. Now, at the end of the day, maybe with better players, he can do that work. Or maybe it's just an area of his game that he doesn't specialize in. And I feel like, no cap, I'll be so honest with you guys. Like I've always said in it, I feel like with Ten Hag, it's a similar thing. Ten Hag focuses a lot on like retention, build up and rare tear tear with the ball off the ball structure shape ain't the best the managers that don't have the structure uh and like like managers that don't have the structure and the shape off the ball to build a team defensively what they end up doing is just go compact so just put two rows of five listen hail mary yeah just everybody die for the ball put your body on the line that's what Man United do. Man United done it last year, by the way. Like, if you ever looked at Man United's shape off the ball, it was just like, it was literally like two rows of four and then like just Bruno and Rashford. But like, why is it that sometimes you watch teams and all they've got is three defenders, but they look solid? That's my only question mark on Deserve. That is my only question mark on Deserve, which is defensively, you need to find a solution. You need to find a structure. You need to find a way of playing because you can't set up your team to just play with the ball. You also need to set up your team to play without the ball. Bada bing, bada boom. It's literally the two uh, managers that I always speak about. Jose was a specialist in building his teams off the ball. So manipulate the opposition. M manipulate the opposition without possession of the ball. Guardiola was the opposite. Coach my team on the ball. Manipulate the opposition with possession. With and without. Those two, like, mastered it to a level. Jose always had, like, the game changers in attack. Pep, fair enough. I'll be real. Pep's, like, mastered both. But that's why, like, funnily enough, fast forward, now when you look at Jose, Jose offensively struggles. His Roma team was struggling to put the ball into the back of the net.
like I don't want to say they rely on individuals, but basically, like the point is, is where like it's two contrasting philosophies that focus on two different ends of the pitch. The Zerbi for me, it's close to Pep. Not like that before anybody tries to flip it. No, 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 no. As in, he focuses a lot on play with the ball, but not on play without the ball. At a top team, he can get spanked. I'll be honest. Like, if he comes up against a team that has better ball retainers, they have a better structure, it might be a better manager. It might just be a better team. If that team keeps hold of the ball, they will find cracks in this Brighton team. And what doesn't help is that if the Zerbi's teams, because he sets them up to play with the ball, he needs good players. Like, I'll be real, I was watching the game today. Bueno Norte is ass. Like, fair enough, he falls into that bracket of those South American players that they've brought. And Bueno Norte is not good. He scores the occasional banger. He's not good. And CISO has just come back from an MCL. And I'm shocked that he's started three games back to back. Like, I, I can't believe it. I think Gro is good, but I think he's the only one. Pascal Gross is good, but this, this guy plays every single week. Like, you can see the fatigue. With better players, he does look better. But one thing I have seen about him is defensively, he does need to start focusing on it a bit more. Like, if he wants to succeed as a top and become a top manager, he needs to be good at both ends of the pitch. He needs to be good on the ball and off the ball. Or else there'll always be, like, limitations. Michael! Like and subscribe. Come on, man. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do, man. That's what it is. Uh... Go on, lad. Let's try. Let's try to get fifty likes today. Let's try to get fifty likes. Need to get me back on the the algorithm because I told you, man. I have to take care of some. I have to take care of some people, fam. That's what it is. Oh, jabs move. Fam. I'll be real. This is good. <laughs> uh, I don't. So I don't. Listen. What? 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 You know what it is? I'll be real. I looked at my lights today and I just opened them. That's all I've done. I don't know anything. I just opened them. Okay? So hopefully it's worked. Hopefully it's worked. Maybe we've stumbled across something. It's BT! David! David in the house! What are we saying? Check the video. Listen, 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 listen. All I'm going to say, invest. You know what? Let me, get, let me grab the mic. Invest in the dip. That's what they tell you in crypto, yeah. Sometimes a coin, halas, it finishes. Everybody panics. Everybody starts uh, packing their bags, getting ready to move back home, live in a caravan and this and that. Bro, invest in the dip. The, Zer the Zerbi stocks are at an all-time low. Invest. Because you will profit, fam. <laughs> I don't know when. You will profit, though. Maybe it's in 10 years' time. You will profit. That's all it is. Jack going down. Uh -huh. That's what it is. What are you saying? It's a tug of war between Potter and Tuku, with Potter currently favorite. Who is that for me? Yeah, I'll be I'll be honest though. Uh a, this deserve spanking in Europe is gonna it will push him down the pecking order. I will be real. I, I, because you have to bear in mind, Man United is a team that focuses a lot on, like, we take pride in our European pedigree. Like, having said that, we finished last this year. But listen, we take pride in European pedigree. Like, we don't want to be embarrassed on the global stage. United are definitely going to look at Deserve today and be like, yo, you just got spanked 4 now. I think they will apply, like, like context, like injuries, that like the squad is not good enough. Let's call it a spade a spade. That Roma team is better. I think De Zerbi is better than De Rossi, but De Rossi's got the better team. Okay? And I'm not going to lie, bro. That keeper is dog shit, fam. Man said steal, fam. That, that might be one of the worst keepers I've ever seen. But that's what it is, man. That's what it is. What's JJ? What are we saying? His defensive structure and personnel stink. I like his football, but getting battered once a month is not going to... Yeah, that's, that's what... You know what it is, bro? You said it. It's his defensive structure. It's... I, I explained it, like, the first 10 minutes of this stream. I explained it. He needs to work on it. He can. It's just, is it something that he prioritizes? Because so many managers, like, they have this arrogance to them where they're like, listen, I don't need to coach my team defensively. Why? 
because coaching my team defensively is not going to put the ball into the back of the net. So I'm going to coach my team strictly on the ball. Bro, in a game of football, you're not going to dominate the ball 24-7. So it's... I'm going to do a video on it. I will I will do a video on it. I will. Uncle Ross! Brighton have the same, even better type than last season. I'm going to move the profile. They lost two man, Casey and Mac 10. This is the Brighton model. You know what it is, bro? It's the Brighton model, but it's just... Casado and Mac 10 are two big, two big players. And I'll be real, like, no March, no Matoma. Like, I think Adingra is better than March. But, like, I don't even know who was playing today out wide. It's just, it is what it is, man. Listen, we ain't talking about, we ain't, we ain't talking, we ain't talking about no deserve today, fam. Listen, let's talk about the overlap, fam. Let's talk about the interview, bro. I was up till like 4 a.m. yesterday watching that shit. Yeah? But listen. Oh, you caught my attention. What are we saying? How would you rank the Zerbi, Arteta, Jabi, and... Oh, Jabi, okay. Uh, from the top of my head, I would go... I would go... Jabi Alonso, Arteta. The Zerbi, Jabi. <laughs> Listen, bro. Listen, I, I, I don't rate Jabi. I'll be real. I said it a year ago. I was like Spanish Oligada, yeah? Listen. They don't give me credit for it. You know what it is, isn't it? Yeah, when I'm right, they never give me credit. They, when I'm right, they never give me credit. When I'm wrong, they cook me. Yeah, but it's calm. That's what it is. Oh, man. But anyways, let's uh, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh, smash the likes. As always, like I said, you guys need to get me back on the algorithm. I'll be real. Because uh, my two days off destroyed it. But anyways, let's get into it. I don't know if any of you guys have seen the interview. No cap. The only problem is with YouTube is you can't watch it. Because I'll be real. The first... The two-thirds of that video was fun. Like, the last part is where they start talking about, like, him as a player and rare tete. I don't care about that. I'll be real. Like, I ain't got no interest in that. The first two parts, Interesting. I'll be real. And you know what it is? Perfect timing. I feel like I feel like the interview came out at perfect time. Perfect time. Especially when you bear in mind, Man United and I got a new board. Because he highlighted some of the flaws of the old board. So I feel like the new board need to make uh, need to make sure that those mistakes aren't repeated. He also spoke about recruitment. He spoke, he spoke about players. Bro, listen, I, I feel like. The first 40 minutes was good. No cap, though. They're wasted. But man, I was watching it. This man never told me when, like, the actual podcast starts. So I'm watching it from, like, minute one. Bro, you know the first 10 minutes? The man were eating. Bro, you know, I'm sat there, like, ready, bro. I've all got my paper and pen, fam. Getting ready to do my notes. I was like, fam, why did you talk to me about Norwegian curry, fam? Norwegian stew. And then talking about, oh, the, 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 the pie is not cooked well. I'm like, what? Fam, Gary never went and brought some old rusty apple juice, fam. I'm just sat there like, when is the football talk going to start? Then I realized I wasted 15 minutes just watching six men eat. And you know what's a problem when they're eating, but I'm not? Because look, sharing is caring, okay? How are you man eating, but not me? We either all eat together or we, we all starve together. But I was just sat there, fam. But anyways, then it started and then it was good. I'll be real. Then it started and it was good. Okay, let's talk about it. I need to remember what order it was in. I've got four points that I want to talk about. Yeah, four points. You know what? Let's try to do something today. Like, let's try to keep up to date with the, the, the chat. If you want to send a super chat, it will probably come up to me first time. That's what it is. Bro, I'm telling you, fam. Bro, I was watching it, fam. I was like, yo, why is Ian Wright there, fam? Yeah, you know, fam. I like, man, like Ian Wright, fam. Man was back in that pie, fam. I was like, what is going on, fam? But anyways. anyways, 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 anyways. Okay. Point number one. Uh, I think he spoke about the Watford game. Now, you see that Watford game? You see what he said? It tells you everything about Manchester United, isn't it? Yeah, poor mentality. Poor mentality. Players that don't have the balls to play for Manchester United. Man goes, at halftime, I knew it was over. Yeah, I watched it. It was like, at halftime, I knew it was over. I knew tomorrow morning, I'm getting sacked. 
no matter what happens. I'm getting sacked because he had already lost to Tottenham. He had already lost to Liverpool and he had already lost to Manchester City. And this was like the game that everybody looked at and was like, listen, Watford, Vicarage Road, paper over the cracks, win. He couldn't. Yeah, he couldn't win. I'll be uh, listen. I just gotta put it out there just from the beginning, like, bro. And I was watching that interview and I was thinking in the back of my head, yo, bring Oli back, fam. But then I was like, no, no, no. I was like, Hajj, calm down. Yeah, I was like, Hajj, you're hungry. You're beginning to say things that you don't really mean. Cause no lie, fam. Like emotionally, I was getting sucked in. But then I looked in the mirror and I was like, Hajj, you're hungry, fam. So I let it slide. So he goes like at half time. I just like he's like. He's like, it, had, it reached a point where I couldn't even rally the troops anymore. So at half time, I was like, listen, who wants to come off? Who wants to come on? Who wants to play? Who doesn't want to play? I remember that game. Yeah, listen, bro, it's all making sense. Bro. I remember that game at half time. Donny came on. And while in the back of my head, I was like, yo, why is Donny coming on? Like, Donny never comes on. Bro, Donny never starts. Now it all makes sense. They were giving him charity minutes, fam. But fair play, he scored, didn't it? McTominay and Rashford went off. Now, I'm not going to lie in it. Let's play devil's advocate. I know what everyone's going to say. Like, uh, because he said, who wants to come off? Put your hand up and I'll take you off. Like, I don't owe you guys anything. If you can't be bothered to play, jump off. If you're too, like, emotionally scarred or whatever, come off. I don't think McTominay and Rashford, like, had had any, like, ill feelings towards him. Or, like, they didn't care. That's why they came up. Like, trust me, guys. Trust me. I hate Rashford, innit? I would love to come out here and tell you guys what a pussy oh he is. He 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 down tools. He didn't even want to play the 45 minutes he requested to come off. What a poor player. I would love to do that. Trust me. I would love to do that. But I'll be fair. I don't think so, innit? Yeah, I just think because he did say, like, some players were crying, which for me was funny, fam. I'll be real. <laughs> About to get bad 4 1, fam. You might have sat there crying, fam. But listen, I think with Lind, I, I think like when it comes to like, um, when it comes to like Rashford, McTominay, because he did mention he was like, like McTominay would run. He was like, McTominay is one of those players that always gave you 100%. I wouldn't be surprised if like McTominay was the one that was hit, like hit hard by it. So he wanted to come off. Rashford, like, let's be real, fam. Like, Rashford played an entire season under Oli with his back broken. So I don't think it was a matter of like he didn't care anymore and rare tear tear. No cap. I actually think he's another one that was like just he was just like hit hard by it. Couldn't maintain any composure. Couldn't control his feelings and then he wanted to come off. Because like, let's be real fam. It was a dead rubber game. Man had lost. Whether you play, whether you don't, the spotlight isn't on you. Okay? But you know what it is? Like I looked at it in a different way. Where I was like, listen, if it's half time, and I think at half time it was like either two or three nil, or maybe it was four nil. I can't remember what the score was, but we were losing. And I was like, fam, like it says a lot about this team's mentality and their attitude, yeah. Because if your manager comes in, and this is like a manager that from what he said, like everyone was behind his back. No, like everyone supported him. That's what I meant. Okay, that's what I meant. Like, everyone supported him. If you see your managers coming in and he's like, he's defeated. He's defeated. He's like, listen, I'm getting sacked. This is the last time I'll coach you guys. This is the last time I'll manage you guys. This is the last time we will have a halftime team talk. Because I'm gone. Because we've lost. I'm just looking at it and thinking like, if the players were as committed as they like to say, if they liked the manager as much as they liked. Now, fair enough. Tactics is tactics. Like, losing to Liverpool is tactics. Losing to City is tactics. I'm looking at it and thinking, like, surely you, man, could have, like, rolled up your sleeves, given 110%, and you could have beaten that Watford team. Because don't try to tell me no team's ever come down. No team's... Don't try to tell me that no team's ever won from being 4-0 down. Bro, I've seen teams come from 4-5-0 down. It was Watford. So I just, like, I just looked at it, and I was like, fam, like... These men were defeated as well. Like, the manager was defeated, but so were they. So were they. They were defeated as well. Because I remember that second half performance. Yeah, besides that, besides that goal, we've done nothing. 
Like we done, we done nothing. There was no fight. There was no energy. I was watching the game and I was like, yo, I can't wait for this to end. I literally can't wait for it to end. I'm just thinking like, fam, like don't get me wrong in it. Like emotions are important. Yeah. But it's like when I look at some of the big teams, they've got players that know when to put their emotions aside because listen, it's a game of football and I'm getting paid to get the job done. So I looked at that Man United team and I was like, fam, so you man couldn't even put your emotions aside to actually play the game. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Does that mean if ever something was to happen and go bad, you man would just sit down and start crying, fam? Like, is that, is that what you... So basically, when Ghost died in power, Rashford was sat there crying. When they sent Tariq to prison, Sancho was sat there punching the wall. Is that what you man are trying to tell me? Like, any bit of bad news, any adversity, that like these men just crumble. And they can't handle it. Like, they can't just look in the mirror and take accountability. Because real talk, you losing 4-1 to Watford, you can blame the manager for tactics and rare tear tear. But I'll tell you, man, one thing for free. That game against Watford was in the bottom three for distance covered for Manchester United that season. And that was a shit show of a season. First half under Oli, the other half under Randy. That was the worst season I've ever watched as a Man United fan. But at the end of the day, fair enough. If the tactics are holding you back, if the coaching is holding you back, there's nothing holding you back from running and giving 100%. So save me with those crocodile tears, fam. I'll be real. Save me. Now, listen, if Man United lost that game, but at the end of the game, we topped it. Like, we covered uh, we covered the most distance. Uh, we sprinted the most. We covered the most ground. I'll be like, listen, you, man, physically done your job. Tactically is where you were held back. Brother, man, them were not even jogging that game. But now I'm being told they were crying at half time. You see what I mean? Like, it's not adding up. Like, it's not adding up. Like, if you're fuming because, like, you're crying because the manager is about to be sacked, you've got such an attachment towards them, you've got such a connection with them, put in a shift, bro. Because Man United that season were trash. Liverpool, we weren't running. We lost 5 0. We weren't, we weren't running. City, we lost 2 0. That was the worst game I've ever seen. Us against Manchester City. Like, man got slapped. We got Lil Broad. And I was cooking all of them at that time. I was like, yo, why are you man not running? Why are you man not sprinting? Why are you man not closing down space? Why are you man not pressing? But now you want to cry, fam. Bro, I'll be real yeah. You see in football, in some games, you need tactics. You need that extra bit of quality to get the job over the line. The majority of games. Work hard, you'll win. I swear to God, I've seen some of the shittest of teams win games. And I'm like, bro, you might have no quality. Like, you might have no stars. 11 players that do the basics will get you a very far away in football. It really will. It won't be the most fancy. It won't be the most eye-catching. It will get the job done more than 50% of the time. But man didn't even have players doing the basics. So I'm looking at it and I'm thinking like, so you guys are crying, but it's like, you didn't even put up a fight. I just got loser mentality. I'll be so honest. Like, I just got loser mentality. Like, fair enough, you're upset the manager's getting sacked. But I was like, listen, this is just loser mentality, man. Like, come on. At least go out there and like, give it, you give it your all. Leave it all out there on the pitch. They didn't. They were just like, yep, he's getting sacked. They all start crying. And that's what it is. But, like, that was one thing for me where I was like, listen, bro, the future board need to take into consideration that we need strong players. Like, I'm not saying don't have emotions here, but I'm saying, bro, you need to have players that understand. I'm getting paid to do a job. I'm getting paid to do a job. Do your job. Now, the second point, and the funny thing is, he mentioned this a few times. Oh, and I loved it. Every time he mentioned it, I went to the screen and I spudded him, fam. He was like, after his first season, they got rid of players that were like runners after his first, second season. So he was like, I had the McTominays that would run. I had the, I don't know why he mentioned Andreas, but anyways, he was like, I had the Andreas Pereiras that would run. I had the Dan James that would run. And then he goes on to say, like, some of these players, when things aren't going to plan and they're losing, they like they down tools. 
They're not interested anymore. They stop running. And I was like, fam, like you see this board, you need to take that. You need to take all of those things on board. Bro, just because you're losing doesn't mean you should stop running. Because the funny thing is, ever since then, I saw the same players not run under, under Ralph. I saw the same players not run in Ten Hag's first season and the same players are not running this year. So what does that tell you? It tells you it's a pattern. It's not Ten Hag alone. These men never ran for Oli. These men never ran for Ralph. And they're not running for Ten Hag. Now, of course, fair enough. Ten Hag's pressing system, is structure and this and that, it's flawed. You can still run. These men don't run. Ralph tried to get them to press. Bro, I'll be real. Ralph was booted out of the door in the first 25 minutes, fam. Like, after the first 25 minutes against Crystal Palace, them man probably all united and told each other in the group chat, fuck Ralph Ranick. We're not going to listen to a word he says. Yeah, he's just a caretaker. He couldn't get anything out of them. Only in his last season couldn't get anything out of them. Fair enough, the players are poor, the tactics and this and that, but I'm talking strictly about running, bro. Running. It doesn't matter which manager you have. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what system you're playing, who you're playing against. Run. Now, as soon as we're talking about running, he did mention something where he was chatting shit. I'll be real. You know what it is? Because he mentioned it. I was like, listen, fam. Listen, 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 listen. Don't try fool an Arab, fam. Arabs can't be fooled, fam. I was like, don't try to fool me, fam. Man must have mentioned, yeah. Before Ronnie. We were, we were one of the best pressing teams in Europe in the Premier League. That's what he mentioned. Well, you know, as soon as he said it, yeah, I paused it. I was like, I know a brother's chatting shit because I don't remember us ever being a good pressing team under Oli. And I knew exactly how people would flip it. Oh, it's because we want to sign Ronaldo. And he's like 37 and he can't press and red. I was like, you know what? I don't remember us being a pressing team. I swear to God, under Oli, we were not a pressing team. But he went on to say that like, we were one of the best pressing teams in the Premier League. Bro, no cap, fam. My uncle, before he became a Jedi, he was a Fed. So I've got, like, all the facilities that I can check when someone's lying, when someone isn't. Fam, Man United were not even in the top half. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. The season before, like, his whole full season, fam, Man United were not even in the top half for successful presses. For recoveries in the opposition uh, in the op in the final third for this that's covered we were not even we were not even in the top half bro i'm looking at the numbers and i'm like yo something's not adding up either the numbers are lying or you're lying it's one of the two numbers don't lie numbers do not lie numbers paint a very different side to a story as long as you can break them down but you know what it is i was like listen don't get that listen but if i was there if i were you mad i'll be trying bear shit yeah, listen, you know, ain't nobody going to call me out on chatting shit. You know what I mean? But I was like, yo, this is crazy. Because, bro, we were never a presses team under you. We were never a successful. Bro, I was cooking my United's press under Oli because I was like, it's so flawed. My United just used to just, like, sit back. It was literally, like, Ten Hag ball last year. But Ten, Ten Hag at times last year would want us to play out from the back. With Oli, we never done that. Like we didn't focus on playing out from the back. We were just like very root one, get Rashford, get Greenwood, get Martial into the channels and then let them do what they do best. But I was just like, bro, we were never, ever a pressing team, fam. So it's like, it's like who, who are you waffling to, fam? We were never, ever a pressing team with it. But he mentioned that. And you can clearly see like from his tone where he felt like he was let down the most was players didn't want to work hard. And I swear down, fam, I was like, listen, if I was part of the new board, the squad's changed a lot. Yeah, we've gotten rid of a hell of a man. I would just walk in and be like, listen, whoever was part of, whoever was signed prior to Oli getting sacked, you go. You go. That's, that's what I would do. That's exactly what I would do. Because that way, everything that Oli ever done, everything that Oli ever achieved, any player that played under his regime is now not here. It's a fresh start. Because the funny thing is, he mentioned the players that wanted to run. The others that he didn't mention, I'm just going to assume that they didn't want to. But bro, I swear down, I'll walk in now and just look at it and be like, listen, Rashford, I've seen you not run. 
you can bounce. Sancho, I've seen you walk around. You can bounce. Luke Shaw, you can bounce. Who else is there? Who else is still here from like all these times? Lindelof, you can bounce. Like every player that was here under Oli, I swear that I'd get rid of them. Because for me, that's like the best way to get like a culture reset, work on a new environment, bro. And the funny thing is all of those players can be regarded as like the senior pros because they've all been here for a long time. Rashford's approaching a decade at the club. Shaw is approaching a decade at the club. Lindelof's been here for like five, six years. You see what I mean? Those are like the senior pros. Like you see when you walk into a team, there's the players that have been here for a few years and then there's like the players that are like part of the furniture. The furniture sets the tone. I'm looking at it and thinking, nobody's going to walk in and start listening to a guy that's been here for one year. No, 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 no. They're always going to take on board what the guy that's been here for eight years will have to say. I need all of them gone. I need all of them gone, bro. For whatever reason, I just need all of them gone. Everyone that was part of Oli, I need them gone. That's just my opinion. No cap. To be fair, anyone that's here under Ten Hag, I need them gone as well. I just, I swear, my dream, my actual dream is to like keep four man, bin the rest and just start from scratch. That is my dream. It's not going to happen. But oh, like the thing is, is like he kept mentioning, he was like, players didn't want to run. Players that didn't start week in, week out with down tools. And he even mentioned, like, he was like, oh, in football, like, fair enough, the Premier League is intense and this and that, but it's good to have a small squad because that way you can split the minutes. He was like, I had players that I kept telling them, yo, next week you're playing, next week you're playing, next week you're playing. But he's like, I can't play them. Maybe they're not good enough. The game doesn't suit them. But he was like, after a month, they get upset. And then he goes, the players that get upset were the ones who leaked. If you're a happy player, you would never, ever leak things. Never, because you have no reason to. You've got respect to the manager. You've got respect to your teammates. You like your job. Bro, if you like your job, you're not going to do anything to go against it. Who were the players in that season that weren't happy? Because, yo, by the way, let's just put it out there. Like, the man management and everything on a Ten Hag has been shocking, okay? It's not a happy camp. But, like, what I see online of, like, yo, the camp under Oli was better. That's bullshit. <laughs> Bro, the camp under Oli, bad. They just liked Oli. Yeah. Oli, the difference between Oli and Ten Hag was Oli always had a smile on his face. So, even when Man United were losing, he, always, he was always, like, approachable. You can always go up to him and chat to him and this and that. He was just a better, I don't know if it's fair of me to say, but it was just like he was a better human. He was just kinder. He was nicer. Being nice ain't winning me trophies, fam. And neither is being angry. Okay, it's all about balance. But don't ever try rewrite history, fam. Yeah, the camp on the Oli was trash. Bro, there were leaks every single day. Bro, why did I find out a man don't want to sit with Wani and have his apple pie with him? Why did I find out that Ronaldo has quinoa whilst Luke Shaw put his custard down? See what I mean? Man, was seeing... Maguire's mom and dad and sisters come out and say he's unhappy because of this. Uh, players are looking down on him because he's the captain. This and that, bro. The camp under Oli was shocking. It's just people have forgotten about it. But what's it called? There were like so many leaks, and you know what it is. You just got to look at who were the players that weren't performing that season. Who were the players that were in and out of the team, and then. Just fast forward it to this year. Or look, any team. Like, you know what Oli has said? It doesn't just apply to Man United. It applies to every single team out there, which is when things aren't going to plan and some players are not starting, they get upset. When you begin to find out that things are going out to the media, it's those players. I feel like it's just a common rule across football. It's like work. If you work in a company, but you're not happy. You're going to go and start chatting shit, like, to your colleagues. Like, you know what, fam? My manager's called Tom, innit, yeah? Fuck Tom, fam. Tom's a pussy, old fam. He don't even wash his hands when he goes to the toilet. That's what you're going to start saying. Yeah, that's what you're going to start saying. You're not happy. You are not happy. Let's say, 
I don't know, let's say your your colleague is like Karen. Man, I'll start body shaming. Bah, Karen takes up two seats. I'm looking at it and thinking, yo, which players of that season were unhappy? The Rashfords were unhappy. The Maguires were unhappy. Safe. That's reason for me to get rid of them. That's reason for me to get rid of them. There was a period last year when Maguire wasn't part of the starting 11. I was seeing those leaks. I'm seeing the leaks this year. Bro, I need all of them gone. I need all of them gone. Why? Because they survived that Oli tenure. They survived Oli's regime, which had so many cracks. If you survive those cracks, then you know you can survive those cracks in the future again. I don't want those cracks to ever appear again. You see what I mean? But you know what it is? Like, it's a shame because like, he kept banging on about... I'll be real. He talked a good talk. Yeah? About, oh, I wanted to transform us from being a counter-attacking team to a ball-dominant team and rare it. And you know what it is? He says another thing. He was like, if you want to be a top team in the modern game, you have to dominate the ball. On oh, God, if I was a Man United board member, right now I would look at this team and I'd be like, listen, who can I dominate the ball with? If I can't, you're off. Now, bro, there's a lot of there's a lot of ammo in that interview, fam. Yeah, because it's not just Man United, it's just like general football talk. Yeah. You want to dominate the ball, you need two things. Because you dominate games. He said you need to dominate the game. You can dominate games on and off the ball. I swear that I would look at this Man United team and be like, listen, I need players that will work hard on the ball and that will work hard off the ball. If you don't bring both, off you go. Yeah, off you go. If you can't do both, off you go. I don't care if you specialize in one of them. So I don't care if you're good on the ball, but you're trash off the ball. No, no, no. You need to be good at both. Anyone else? No hard feelings? Off you go. That's what I would do. And then he said something else, which was, we only played counter-attacking football because it was the football that these players can play. Like, this is the only style of football that these guys can play. Do you know how damning that is? Like, bro, do you know how crazy that is? Yeah, Because he was like, listen, we tried to do other stuff. We couldn't. This was their play style. Now, on God, look at the players who flourished playing that way. And that will tell you who the counter-attacking players are. Like, who the players are that you can only play this way with. Like, it's not a lie, bro. Like, you don't need a manager to come out and say it for people to believe it, fam. Now, there are some players, you just look at their skill set and you realise they suit this type of play style. They suit that type of play style. These players suit plenty of different play styles, doesn't it? Man United, people always hide behind this whole... Man United culture is attack, attack, attack. Man United culture is counter-attacking end-to-end football. And if you were to ever move away from it, the fans and the media and Rete Tete, they will cook you. Guess what? If you move away from it and you deliver a Premier League title, no one's cooking you. If you were to move away with it and start scoring goals, putting, point, uh, putting points on the board, winning UCLs, nobody will cook you. LVG tried to move away from it. It was dry. Yeah, we dominated games, but we had no bite. We had no penetration. They cooked him. They got rid of him. Nobody cares how you win as long as you win. And most importantly, as long as like you win on a consistent basis. Yeah? Bro, I'll be real. Just look at the team. You know which players suit a certain play style and which players don't. That play style has not rewarded us with any, like, notable trophy. So it's time to move away from it and try something different. There's nothing wrong with it, bro. Try something different. But you mentioned that. I fully forgot about the chat. I'm so sorry. Hit them likes. Yeah, hit them likes, fam. That's what it is. How much we on? 62. Ooh. Aye, 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 aye. Hey, listen, listen, listen. I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate your 60,000. Look, we can, we can shit house 100, fam. I'll be over the moon. That's what it is. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> Neil, my brother, what we saying? 
It's, it's, oh, but I'm missing the Milan game. You know, don't worry, bro. I'm, I'm gonna disappear in like ten minutes. You know, it's, <laughs> what, it is. <laughs> what is it? Man, like Barry and now it's always there. Only time we tried president was I went to Liverpool and held five. I love the audio revision that makes me cringe. He was big up McFred as well. Yeah. You know what it is? You know what it is? I, I, I'll give it to Ollie. Yeah, you see, in that interview, yeah, he talked a good talk. Yeah, he talked a good talk. He talked a very good talk. And you know what the problem is? Yeah, you see, when everybody's so against the current manager. The previous manager can chat shit and he'll get away with it. Because I'll be honest, even Oli, yeah, like, bro, this is what kills me with Oli, yeah. When people would like look back and be like, bro, we played better on the Oli. No, we didn't. I swear to God, I swear to God, I'm putting my neck on the line, yeah. Man did not play better ball on the Oli. Bro, you see, Oli, I was Oli out for two whole years, fam. Oli just had better players. He had a Martial in his peak. He had a Rashford that was way more motivated, way more hungry. He had Greenwood that knew how to put the ball into the back of the net. He had a Bruno that was like still the element of unknown. Like you never knew what you were getting with Bruno. But nowadays, every single team in the world, every single team in the Premier League knows how to stop Bruno. But there's a reason. Why... Oh, by the way, how many penalties were Man United getting in that season, that COVID season? Bro, I swear, Bruno bagged like 12 pence. Or like, is it 11 or something? He had a better attack. Now, of course, fair enough. Like, Ten Hag, he's built this team himself. He's done a shit job at building the team, 100%. But I'll be so real with it. If I was to compare Oli's best season to Ten Hag's best season, bro, I'm taking Ten Hag's best season any day of the week, bro. I'm taking it any day of the week. Defensively, we were better. And on the ball, we were better. Now, of course, like when I say on the ball, we were better. We were not Manchester City level. We were way better, we were, we were way better than we were under Oli. The difference between Ten Hag's team and Oli's team is Oli's team had more moments. As a fan, you're always going to remember the moments more than anything. Under Ten Hag, we didn't really... like We weren't really like a, a moments type of team where like we scored 30-yard screamers and this and that. Nah, like we won games. Did we score the most fancy of goals? No, not really. Did we batter teams? No, but we won. Well, Man United were winning games like 2 1, 1 0, Fulham, this and that. On the Oli, Sheffield hold this five. Aston Villa away from home hold this four. We would batter teams. But I always looked at Oli Ball and I was like, this is just moments of brilliance because you've just got the players for it. Yeah, but now, nah, I, I swear to God, if I was to compare the two, Ten Hag's best season, Oli's first season, I'm still taking Ten Hag. I'm still taking Ten Hag, fam. Listen, you might try and flip it as much as you want, yeah? Because this is what's going to happen. I'm calling it from now. New manager. There's going to come a period where he's shit. Voila! People are going to come out and be like, bro, they're going to start clipping clips from Ten Hag's first season. They're going to be like, oh, we were a football team. Look at the 3 2 5. Look at Dallo. Yeah, I swear. Oh, um, what is it? Rashford got like 30 GA in under Ten Hag in his first season. Yeah, listen, the narrative always changes depending on who you like and who you dislike, you know? But listen, the game's the game, in it? But yeah, man, so you mentioned that. And then the last point, which for me was also worrying, he goes, the captaincy, nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it. You know what that tells me, fam? No ambition. And I've always said it about this Man United team. Like, you see, when I sit down and tell you guys, if you were hungry, if you were motivated, if you had that ambition to become a top player, you would go out and work on your game. You would practice. Bro, every player's dream is to like, well, no, this is what I thought. This is, maybe I was wrong in it, yeah. I grew up in an era. Bro, man, bro, I grew up in an era where it was bare stuff. Man. It was like dinosaurs. We had flying cars, all that shit. But you know what we had when it came to the football pitch? Every player had ambition. Every player wanted to represent their national team. They wanted it to win with their national team. They wanted to win with their team. Now, players took pride in playing football. Players wanted it to become the best. And it's no surprise you had so many good players. There were no systems back then. It was just go out and play your game. The reason why teams won and they were successful is because there were so many good players. Now, those good players, they weren't just born good. No, bro, it's hard work. 
hard work, practice makes perfect. Every single one of those players wanted to like uh, captain their national teams, captain their teams. But 2018, 28, bro, imagine this, 2018, 2019, Man United are doing a car boot sale for the captain's armband. Fam, in what world? Like, in what world? Manchester United, bro. The captain's armband, there's question marks over it. Who wants to be captain? And players are turning around and saying, nah, I don't want to be captain. Nah, bro, allow it. Bro, that's, that's, that's an honour, fam. That's a pride. Give me the captain's armband, fam. Real talk, fam. I'm going to buy a captain's armband. Start wearing it on my match reviews, fam. I am the captain, pussy old. Me! That is crazy, fam. And it's like, they don't even have the balls to, like, come out and tell him. Like, apparently they were telling teammates, uh, coaches, dinner ladies, and rare tete. And you know what the crazy thing is? This, like, this is for me that I, I was like, I was like, it's, it's a group of kids. It's not that they don't want to be captain, but it's like they pick and choose. Oh, I want to be captain at home to Sheffield because I know we're going to batter them 5-0. I can take pride in that. So I could come out and be like, listen, I was captain. I'll be, I'll do it as well, fam. I'm a shameless guy. If I was captain against Sheffield, voila, no kelp can ever chat to me. Because if you ever chat to me, I'll turn around and be like, listen, when I was captain, we won 5-0. We won 5-0. Yeah? My leadership skills. My motivational skills. Me. M-E. I wait till the Etihad. Yo, how do you want to be captain, fam? I'll be like, what? Hey, no habla inglés, fam. What? what are you talking about, bro? No habla inglés. Chat Arabic. Habibi, chat to me in Arabic, fam. What, what do you mean you want to be captain? I've never heard of those words in my life. That's me. I ain't a professional footballer. The fact that they picked and choose when they want it to be captain, on God, that, like, as a manager, that must be the biggest red flag ever because it tells you your players don't have the personality for it. They don't have the ambition for it. They don't have the commitment. I swear, oh, on God, if I was a manager, or, like, even if I was at work, like, let's say if I was at work and I was like, listen, new project, who wants to be project manager? Bro, if nobody puts their hand up, I don't think I'd be able to ever look at anybody the same. Because I'll be like, listen, I've now given you an opportunity to become the main man. Like, show me you can lead by example. And not a single person wanted it. On a consistent of basis, fam. That stinks. And then on top of that, on top of that, pre-game interviews, or like post-game interviews, he was like, some players never wanted to do them. That's why on the Oli, by the way, it was always the same man. It was always the same man. And I remember at the time, I used to get pissed because I was like, yo, why am I United losing? But David De Gea is doing the interview. Listen, I've wanted David De Gea gone for five years, but I love David De Gea. I swear to God, for me, he's a Man United legend. Yeah, Man United legend. It's just his, I spotted his time was up like six years ago. But I respect him, yeah. Whenever Man United lost, he came out. Whenever Man United lost, he came out and he spoke and he had to answer all the difficult questions. And I'm stood there like, well, I'm not stood there, I'm sat there. I'm sat there thinking to myself, surely that's the captain's responsibility. If it's not the captains, it's the vice captains. Yeah, Why is the goalkeeper out there? Where is the captain, fam? Because, yo, the captain made two mistakes today. Come answer for your crimes. He ain't there. And that's when it all like started, like the whole revolution of like, oh, Maguire is a not good enough captain. We need to move away from him. Because I was like, bro, you're not even doing your... Like, your responsibilities as a captain, you're not even doing them. And the, funny, the thing that I loved here yeah, is that Oli mentioned the players that done it. He was like, Dave would go out. McTominay would go out. Lindelof would go out. Luke Shaw would go out. I can't remember if he mentioned Bruno. But I remember Bruno doing interviews. But I can't, I can't remember him mentioning Bruno. And then he did mention Harry Maguire. But out of those five, like, those are the five that I'm certain he mentioned. Maguire done it the least, but he was the captain. So what about everyone else? No, 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 real talk, real talk. What about everyone else? Sorry, I'm going to throw my own guys under the bus here. I love Pogba. Yeah? 
If Pogba goes prison, I'll give him a top bunk bed, fam. That's how much I like Pogba. Where's Pogba? Real ground, real talk. I'm not talking about his performances on the pitch. I'm just asking. If I, I didn't know this information. And I was one of those guys that used to come out and always be like, listen, give him the captain's armband because he will thrive. Make him the main man of the team and he will thrive. But now I'm hearing the captain's armband was being offered to everybody. I don't remember him once being captain, besides that one game against Rochdale, where he came back and he got injured. And it made sense to make him captain because he was the oldest one there. Now, nah, bro, listen, I love the guy. I think he's an amazing footballer. But, but, but what's that telling me? Real talk, what's that telling me? I'm seeing videos of him doing speeches and rare tear tear for France. Why can't you do those speeches for Man United? And the whole time, I always felt like, you know what? They never offered it to him. Because if they did, he would take it. But now I'm hearing, yo, besides those five men, all the other guys didn't want the captaincy. They didn't want to do any media work. I'll defend Pogba when it comes to media work. That's the only one I will defend him. Media work, I feel like because he was a target, whatever he says would be held against him. But the captaincy, to me, I always looked at him as like a leader. And I was like, bro, like, you know, you should have taken it. Should have been like, yeah, I want to be captain. I don't know the ins and outs. Yeah, I don't know the ins and outs. But when the guy comes out and says, nobody wanted it. Like, he was like, we would be going up. Bro, nobody's putting their hand up. They were going to players. Like, yo, do you want to be captain tomorrow? Nah. Yo, do you want to be captain tomorrow? Yeah, 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 I'll be captain. Two minutes later, texting their girls for their girl to text Ollie's wife. And then Ollie's wife texts Ollie to tell him, yo, he doesn't want to be captain. Allow it, fam. What about Rashford? Yeah, man, CUNY and born and bred. Man's doing interviews and this and that. He'd rather be fucking captain of Lil Baby's concert than Manchester United. He was never captain. Why, bro? I thought you were committed to the cause. It's not adding up, fam. It's not, it's just, it's just not adding up. What is it? You can't handle the scrutiny because if you lose, because listen, if Man United lose, the captain will get cooked. It's just, I don't agree with it, but it's just, listen, the captain is always going to be the easiest person to get access to. When you accept being captain, you know you have to lead by example. You have to rally the troops. You have to calm down the troops. You have to carry yourself in a particular way. When the team loses, you're going to have to answer the tough questions. Why did nobody in that camp feel that they were good enough or ready enough to step up? Why? So what, did, did, did we sign kids? Did we sign kids? Yeah, they were good players. They were good players. But did we sign kids? If that's the case, then calm. Listen, whatever Liverpool do, I want you, man, to go copy and paste it. Yeah, what, Liverpool, before they sign a player, cool, I will look at them technically. I will look at them physically. I will look at their injury records. But you know what Liverpool do? They dedicate a whole month to just get to know the player. What habits they have. What they like to do in their spare time. How is their relationship with their family and friends? And I'll be real, this is like some stalker behaviour. Yeah, this is stalker behaviour. Liverpool, on the club, not once have they signed a player that I've looked at and been like, mm, attitude-wise, it doesn't work with Liverpool. Mentality-wise, it doesn't work. Nah, bro, all of them are giving 120%. All of them. All of them are giving 120%. So you know what? Fam, I'm on it. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, you know what it is? Sometimes to get good, you have to copy things from the good teams. Yeah, that's just how it goes. Rob their tactics, rob their ideas, innit? Yeah, and I remember when Liverpool, I remember Liverpool were like the first team to have a throw-ins coach. They got cooked. They got cooked, bro, for having a throw-ins coach. After six months, so many other men started to do it. So many other men started to do it. Bro, you see, in the modern game, you're going to need a coach, a specialist in everything, in corners, in throw-ins. Maybe get yourself a, a guy that can coach players to do interviews and this and that. Bro, that's what it is. That's what it is. 
So it's safe. If Man United now need to go out and hire a department that studies players on a personal level to see whether or not they can fit with the crowd. Like, I'll be real. They do it in the UK, yeah? You get an interview. That is how they do it in the UK. Yeah? You get an interview. First time around, it's a phone call. Hey, you've applied for job A. Please tell me a little bit more about yourself. Okay, cool. You pass that. Then it's like a video interview or like face-to-face. -face. Same old. Why do you want to work here? What can you bring to the team? What experience do you have? Do you see yourself here for the next 10 years? And The typical questions. Then they usually give you an exam. So if, like, if you're working in finance, they'll give you like a, uh, like a maths exam. Yeah, or like an Excel exam. Like, can you do VLOOKUP? Can you do this? Can you do that? Cool. Final interview, and they do this in the UK. They call it a personality interview. They will never ever say to you it's a personality interview. They'll flip it and be like, oh, it's just a, it's just a culture fit interview. They're trying to see if you work well with the people that they have. They might have, it might be a company full of hipsters. If you're not a hipster, you can be the best candidate. They won't hire you because you're not a hipster. Okay? That's what Man United need to start doing. Man United want to build a team on hardworking players. Players with the right attitude. Players with the right hunger. Players that have the right priorities. Listen, pr priorities is an important thing. Some football players, it's like, my priority is not football. My priority is to make money. So if I'm here for two years and Saudi come calling, I don't care what project you've built, I'm leaving because I want the money. Okay? Some players, money comes second. I don't want the money. That money will come. My number one priority is to win a Champions League, to win a Premier League, to, to be the best in the world. Footballers have the same priorities, but they don't have them in the same order. You look at this Man United squad. On oh God, I don't think a single one of them, the number one priority is to become a Premier League winner. They can all come out and tell me, I want to become a Premier League winner. Actions speak louder than words. Your performances, your attitude, your mentalities, they don't tell me that you guys want to become Premier League winners. So count me out. I look at this Man United team and I see players where I feel like the number one priority is just to have a chilled life. It's not even money, bro. It's not even money. Some is to become successful, win silverware. Nah, I don't think any of our players have that as a number one priority. To make money. Yeah, to be fair, they all get paid a shit ton. But even then, even then, I don't even think that's number one for them. I, I, when I look at this Man United team, I look at them and just think, the number one priority that you guys want from being a Man United player is to work in a chilled, calm, cozy environment. An environment where you don't have to be held accountable. Yeah? Like an environment where nobody is going to question you when you do things wrong. Why did you do this wrong? Why? How? What was the reasoning? How can you stop it? Bro, this Man United environment, it's an environment where nobody is held accountable. That's cozy. Bro, imagine I can go into work and get away with murder, fam. I'd love it. And I still get paid. Oh my Lord, bro. That's what these men like. Calm, cozy, chilled environment. An environment, no pressure. Bro, the only pressure that's applied is from the fan base. We want to win. Especially, especially the older generation. I've mentioned this before. The older generation, we have high expectations. We, we apply a lot of pressure. But the younger generation, if you've grown up to Man United and all they've ever done is deliver you a Carabao Cup, you're probably going to be looking at us and thinking, yes, calm, give us five years for the process and this and that. Bro, when I was growing up, fam, if Fergie never won a league title, I'm not waiting five years. So when we signed Ronnie and this and that, bro, nobody came out and told me, oh, we've signed Ronaldo from Sporting Lisbon. We've signed Rooney from Everton. We've signed Alan Smith from Leeds. Get ready for a five-year process. Nobody ever used to tell me that. Bro, you mad. Man's winning it in two years. Man United players, every single one of them, they all share this one common priority on their list. An environment where I can get away with murder and I can get paid and just live a happy life. Why do you think none of them want to leave? Real talk, because they all fall into place. Why do you think none of them want to leave? 
bro, if you were the type of player that wanted, like, if you're the type of player that like thrives under pressure, high expectations, some players they love that shit because it gives them that kick up the ass. It motivates them. It keeps them in lane. Those are the players that come out and just be like, listen, I want to leave. I don't want to stick here and compete for fifth and sixth. I want to leave. Yeah, shout out Ronnie fam. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to be here fighting for fifth and sixth. Even though I'll be fair, the only reason why he said that is because he's thirty-seven. He doesn't have many years on his on his belt. Yeah, he doesn't have many many years guaranteed at the top level. So he's thinking, if I've got two more years, I want to win in those two years. I'm not trying to get a certificate for coming fourth. Yeah, but Ronnie, even throughout his career, this is this is a guy that used to come out. What you might want to boo me, calm. I'll score a hat trick next game. They don't make players like that anymore. They don't. My United players, what? Am I am I on 300 k Calm. I'm gonna go on a sabbatical. I'm gonna go to the mountains. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the mountains, bro. Tell, tells you everything, fam. Man United, the priorities are all off. 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 You look at Manchester City. There's not a single player at Manchester City that I can guarantee you, man. There's not a single player at Manchester City where the number one priority on his list is to get paid. Phil Foden, in my opinion, is getting underpaid. Ruben Diaz is getting underpaid. Jao Cancelo put up one of the best campaigns as a right back, earning 60k. 60k, bro. He was getting underpaid. Not a single one of them. Not a single one of them. Have you ever heard any like any disputes? Like, oh, this Manchester City player's got doubts. He's not signing a new deal because he wants more money. Now, bro, I'm winning silverware. My number one priority is to win silverware. As long as you deliver me silverware, I don't care about the money. The money will come. Yeah, the money will come. Mo Salah was delivering trophies for Liverpool. His number one priority was never to get paid. Eventually, he did get paid. The money will always come. It's just, it doesn't have to come in the first year. It can come in the third year. It can come in the fifth year. In your fifth year, when you've delivered a UCL, you've delivered the Premier League, you've scored over 100 Premier League goals, you've now reached a point where you've got so much leverage, they can't say no to you and they will pay you. And now you're getting paid and you've won it all. You are a successful pro. You will go down as one of the best. Man United, none of them are like that. You mad? Man gave 23 year old Martial 250k, bro. 250k. Rashford was 22 on 250k. Sancho was what 21 on 350. Ever since they signed like those bumper deals, have any of them ever delivered anything to warrant that amount of money? No. But think about it. I'll be real. Like, I'll put myself in their shoes. Getting paid, getting away with murder. I can afford I can afford to put out five out of tens and no one will cook me. Even when they do cook me, what? Talk sport. Is that it? Calm, bro. Bro, talk sport can cook me, fam. I'll get paid. Have any of them actually improved? Have any of them actually taken time out, put their careers first to develop? No. No. It's not just those three. All of them. All of them. Luke Shaw. I like Luke Shaw. I'm a big fan of Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw's been there for nearly 10 years. Man's given me two good seasons out of 10. Or if he's been here for nine years. Two good years out of nine. Luke Shaw, his season is over. He started five games this Man United season. Five games. A season that goes on from August to May. He's given me five starts. Five starts. That's it. What good is that? And I like the guy. I think he's a good player. I think on his day, he's a very good player. But what is that? Five stars. The, the guy only lost weight when Ten Hag came in. Man, then we're trying to feed me bullshit. Hajj, he's big boned. Shut the fuck up, man, about his big boned. What does that mean, big boned? What does that mean? Because when, he, when Ten Hag came in, he lost like 10 kilos. He didn't look big boned. He looked average. He looked like a normal human being. That's Man United. So you see when I come out and say, man needs the culture reset. Man needs an environment reset. Yeah, this is what I mean. I need players, 
goalkeeper from from the from the first team keeper to the reserve keeper. They both have the same ambition. They both have the same goal. They both have the same priorities. They want to win. That way, it doesn't matter if you're starting, if you're coming off the bench. You are going to contribute. With Man United, if I'm not starting, I get upset. That's it. I'm upset. I'm throwing my toys out of the pram. When you bring me on for 20 minutes, I don't care. I don't care anymore because you never started me. Brother, at the end of the day, if the priority is to win, whether you start or come off the bench, help the team to win. Don't put yourself first. Yeah? Don't put yourself first. And that is why, you know what, like, I'll wrap it up on this. Kudos to Bellingham. Yeah, K kudos to Bellingham. Man 17 came to Man United. Apparently, it was by coincidence. Brian Robson was there. Cantona was there. Alex, Fer Sir Alex Ferguson was there. Oli was there. Imagine, they brought four men. Four men, and all four of them took him aside. 17-year-old, bro. Any 17-year-old would get swayed. They'll be like, oh my God, like they'll get sucked in. They'll put pen to paper. Four men. Four, 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 le four legends in, in different ways. All sat him down. Trying to convince him to come to Man United. Imagine, imagine having the balls to turn around and to say to all, those, all four of those guys, yeah, nah, I'm not interested. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Dortmund. Bro, Man United are here. Dortmund are here. He took a step down. Like if he had turned around and said, listen, I don't want Man United. I'm going to go like Madrid. Even then, people might debate like which one is a bigger club. But like, cool. People will be like, listen, Madrid is Madrid. They come with pedigree. They come with the name, the history, the success. Cool. No, 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 no. He was like, I don't want to go to Man United. I'm going to go to Dortmund. Why? Bro, his priority was not getting paid. I guarantee you, and it is a fact, Man United offered him more money than Dortmund did. 17-year-old, his priority was not to get paid. And that's what I mean when I always say the money will come. The money will come. But it's when you deserve it most. Man United, we've just given money out to players that don't deserve it. And then we sit down and we're surprised why they're not motivated, why they're not hungry, why they don't care. But the kid was like, listen, if I want to come to Man United, my priority is I want to play. I want to get X amount of minutes in the first team. I want to be developed. I want to work on this. I want to work on that. But Man United looked at him and they were like, man, man can't guarantee you X amount of minutes. See what I mean? Because I'll be honest with you guys, like it, it genuinely sounded like Man United were going in for him, but he wasn't part of the first team plan as a 17-year-old. Man United, I swear to God, they would have kept him in, in the, like, the reserves. He would. How old is Ahmad? Ahmad is what, 22? And he's being treated like an 18-year-old. You can't even get minutes. He can't even get a start for Manchester United. If Jude had come to Man United, he would be now regarded as one of the most overrated, one of the biggest bums ever. Like just another English player that got overrated at, at Birmingham, came to Man United and didn't live up to it. But that's why I always say, you know what? I respect him so much as a player. I respect his mentality. Because at 17, his head was screwed on. His head was screwed on. And that's why I respect him. I respect Haaland. Haaland went Dortmund. Haaland, every season at Dortmund, had offers to leave. He's like, no, I'm saying. I'm 20. I'll get the big move later on. I won't get the development, the one-on-one -on -one coaching that I'm getting at this small team at a big team. I wouldn't. Because the big teams have higher demands, higher expectations. You're playing week in, week out. The bigger teams, that's why they look at their top players and they're like, listen, if you want to get better, it's down to you. I'm providing you with everything. Money, the facilities, the coaching staff. Because if you don't pull your weight, I'll get rid of you. Top teams are more ruthless than the smaller teams. The smaller teams are more patient. Yeah, they're more patient. I will develop you. I will accept 10, 0 out of 10 performances from you. I will. I'm going to develop you, hands-on coaching. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to nurture you. That's why so many teams loan out their younger players to those smaller teams because they can't, they can't afford to do that because they need to deliver. That's why you look at so many managers. They do it at the smaller teams. There's not much pressure on them. They've got that time. They've got that leeway. 
when it comes to the big team, bro, you better put up those three points. I don't give a shit if your whole team is injured. You better find a way. Because I'm not going to sit down and start saying, oh, but player A is injured, but player C is injured. Oh, there was a weather change. No. Big teams have the demands, the expectations. The pressure is always there, whether it's now or in 50 years' time. Man United have gone out and signed young players that can't handle those pressure. And on top of everything, we're not ruthless enough. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll always use like Madrid as an example. Madrid will sign a young player. Bro, if you can't handle it, so you can't handle getting cooked because you've been shit. You can't handle your teammates. Bro, you mad. Thing is that Real Madrid uh, uh, changing room. If someone is shit, the, the senior pros are not stepping up to him. Like, not on an aggressive one. They should be like, yo, like, what's going on with your performance? Why didn't you pass me the ball? Now, to everybody, that's toxic. That's an unhealthy environment. That's a winner's environment. They hold, they hold one another accountable. Bro, in the interview, it's been 20, 25, 30 years. Keane was still cooking Solskjaer for that miss against Leverkusen. He was still cooking him. He's asking him, I'll never forgive you. Bro, it's done. Their careers are done. They're married. They've got kids. They're pundits. They're coaches. Bro, like, that's it. What's done is done. Imagine for 30 years, man hasn't forgiven him because he missed an opportunity. Fam, man United be losing games. The next day, man, them are going clubbing. Man, them are living their life. Them man don't care. Them man don't care. That's the problem. Top teams, I'll sign you. Can't handle the pressure. You're not willing to work hard to improve. I will get rid of you. Even if I make a 90% loss, I will get rid of you. Because there's better players out there. The moment a top team signs young players, or it doesn't even have to be young players, just players that are not good enough. Once you sign young, once you sign players that are not good enough and you don't hold them accountable anymore. You don't put high expectations and high pressure on them and you begin to accept it. Do you know what happens? Everybody's favorite saying. The standards begin to go down. That's what happens. This is all a fact. The standards begin to go down. That's exactly what's happening with Man United. We signed players that were not good on that weren't good enough. They weren't willing to walk, they weren't willing to work hard. We didn't really have like an environment where we can develop them and improve them. No, bro, because we need to put points on the table. Coaches don't have time. Every coach that we've ever had, they don't have time to take this player aside and improve their crossing. If you want to improve your crossing, bro, you can go do it alone. I'm providing you with everything. Money, time, facilities, coaching staff. You've got the time. But at a top team, there's nobody holding your hand. It's exactly like university. When you're in high school, so from like year seven, I'm speaking about the UK. When you're in high school or like secondary school, from year seven to year 11, there's always somebody there holding your hand. Mahmoud, you can't do algebra? Come, come. After school, from three to four, one hour, me and you, one-on-one, -on -one, I'll teach you how to do algebra. Yet yeah, teachers will come up to you. They will offer it to you. Let me help you. Fam, out, yeah? Uh, in high school, if you're like five minutes late, they're calling your parents. Hey, uh... Bradley hasn't come to school. Where is he? Fam, I remember I done that for five years. Then I went to college. Brada. My college, my college teacher looked at me. He was like, listen, here's your timetable. If you're not in, if you don't do the work, I don't care. That's, that's exactly what he said to me. That's exactly what he said to me. He didn't sugarcoat it. He was like, now you're an adult. Yeah, you're an adult now. I'm not going to treat you like a kid. You had you've had your kid phase in high school. You're now you're not you're now an adult. It's your work, it's your studies, it's your life. I'm gonna give you work. If you if you give me some shit work in return, if you do crap homework, if you don't study for your exams, if you don't do your coursework correctly, I don't care. It's your career. It's your career. You're the person that's not gonna get into the university that you want to get into. You're the person that's not going to get the job that you want. It's all on you. You're going to be held accountable. Bro, then I went to uni. Yeah, then I went to uni. Bro, 
Uni, there weren't even teachings, bro. It was just lectures. Lectures and seminars. Bro, the seminars, there was no teaching in that shit. They would basically just go through the lecture in a bit more detail. But I'm sat there and I'm thinking, fuck, I don't know how to do this. Says to me, yeah, go to the library. Take out those two, three books and read them. And I'm just there, like, bro, I'm just there baffled. Like, so what are you getting paid to do? Are you just getting paid to read off a PowerPoint slide? He's like, yeah. He's like, I'm a professor. I don't teach. I just mark. I mark your work and I tell you where you went wrong. But I don't tell you how to get it right. No, no, I just tell you, listen, you done this wrong. Go have another attempt. Bro, in school, they'll tell you where you went wrong and how to get it right. And if you can't get it right, Come stay after school with me for two hours and I'll help you how to get it right. Bro, in uni, that man threw me under the bus. They're like, yeah, go get the, bro, I swear, I know man them in uni that get tuition. In university, they're getting tuition. That support ain't there. Now apply that to a football team. Top teams, they don't give you that. They don't give you that support that you would get in a high school. They don't give you that. Come on board. Yeah, come on board. I'm expecting you to have been developed, coached, everything. If we've now taken a gamble on you and you're not at that stage, you better make yourself at that stage. So you better tell the man them, yo, I'm not jumping on pro clubs tonight. I've got training for two hours after training. Training after training. After two years, I'm going to judge you off the pitch. After those two years, bro, if you're not performing, off you go. Off you go. Because if I accept those performances of yours, if I accept that attitude of yours, that uh, unwillingness to work hard, my standards are going to go down. Because now I'm going to become a team that can't compete for La Liga, that can't compete for the UCL. My reputation comes first. My reputation comes first. My name comes first. And I'm not going to let you and you and you tarnish it. I'll let you go. And I'll bring somebody else that has a better attitude. That's a better player than you. You know what? He might not even be a better player than you. But he's willing to work more hard than you. And over time, he will become a better player than you. That's what top teams do. That's what top teams do. Man United, what did we do? We signed them. They didn't do well. They weren't willing to work hard on themselves off the pitch. Didn't take training serious. But we were never, ever ruthless to let them go. That's the difference. That's why Man United have gone down. I swear to God. I'm not lying. I'm not making it up. The shoe fits. Yeah, the shoe fits. Why have we done nothing notable in the past 10 years? That, there's your answer. There's your answer. Now look in the early 2000s. Why is it every young player that we ever signed went on to be a big star? Ronnie went to be the best in the world. The GOAT. Ev uh, Rooney Rooney was like an exciting prospect at Everton he had cr sky high potential well what you think Rooney became the player that he, he became just because of sheer talent now nah, bro hard work if anything that's probably one of the reasons why Rooney like fell off at such an early stage the, bro the guy was everywhere centre back, centre mid, right back left back Mandem can't even play left. Mandem can't even play left wing for Manchester United. Imagine asking them to now go play left back. Are you might seeing a difference. You never had to tell Rooney to drop back to help the team defend. If anything, it got to a point where they were like, "Listen, Rooney, stop dropping back to help the team defend, because when we do attack, you're never there." But the guy was that committed, bro. He's up and down, up and down. He wants to help the team all over the pitch. But well, nowadays, man, them, they can't even do their job as a number nine. They can't even do, do, do their jobs as a winger. But we sit down and we make excuses for them. Oh, it's because of this. It's because of that. It's because of the coach. It's because... No. No, 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 no. Two things can be right. Coach ain't being good enough, but the players are trash. And those two things together is what's dragged Man United down the pecking order. And on top of everything, the board has never, ever been ruthless enough to look at a player and be like, listen, you've been here for two, three years. Rather than improving, you've regressed. It's time to let you go. Can't let him go. He generates shirt sales. We can't let him go because we can't profit on him. We can't let him go because we're going to make a massive sale. 
That's what Man United have always been about. That's what Man United have been about for 10 years. That's why now you've got bang average man on a shit ton of money that don't want to leave. You can't let them leave because you're going to make such a big loss. And that's what happens when your board prioritizes revenue. The revenue will come. When silverware, the revenue will come. The sponsorships will come. It's just you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of money. You're going to have to spend a lot of money in the beginning to get yourself back on that stage. That's what my United need to do on the new board. God knows how, God knows how we got there, even though it was supposed to be uh it was supposed to be an Oli an Oli interview. But let's see what everybody's saying. Let me turn home. That's not gonna happen, bro. Let's all go on that bid. What you say? Bay United is like a conspiracy theory, and every time a manager is sat, we will get the next episode. That's what it is, man. That's what it is. But I'm telling you, bro, if that was me, bro. If that was me, it's different, fam. That's what it is. That's what it is, bro. That's a fact. Yeah. That's what it is. Bro, speak on it, fam. Bro, the leaks were mad, even though I'm a whole hour behind, fam. But listen, what's that like saying? Did I manage to, like, shit house my way to 100? I'm on 78. Oh, for real, 78, I take it. 78 is good. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, if someone can get me to 80, that would be amazing. It would be amazing. That's what it is. We say next season onwards, we might be the only team in the big six that still play counter attacking football, bro. You know what it is, you know, JJ. I've never thought of it like that. I'll be real, you know what it is. I've never ever thought of it like that because if that's the case, football's moved on from where like counter attacking can like be sustainable and win you games. Like I've always said, every team in the world can counter attack, counter attacking can never be uh option A. Every team in the world counter attacking is plan B. Manchester City, go direct to Haaland, Doku. That's plan B, bro. But the plan A is always there, week in, week out. How can Man United make plan B, plan A, but then there is no plan B? Because football's shown. On so many occasions, injuries, different opposition. Plan A doesn't always work. That's why they always say, or I always say, contingencies are good. You need a few plans. You need a few methods up your sleeve. Man United. The most of the managers that we've appointed in the past have always stuck to plan A. Counter-attacking. When it doesn't work, we crumble, we look shit. None of them have been successful. That's what it is, man. Hit the like, lads. I agree, bro. I agree. Did he? What part? I never saw that part. Maybe, or maybe it was towards the end. I I only watched like the first fifty minutes. Then I was like, I don't care about the rest. So maybe he did say it in like in like periods. Yeah, bro, hundred percent. What say? It's the culture of the club. I was going to say I had Rooney scores, gig carry, and a man could be captain. That's what it is, bro. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's in a gravy trade. <laughs> Bro, we've got Anthony in 200 plus. He was a... I, I'll be real. Aisuki, you should have never told me that. You should have never told me that. I think he is. I think he is. You see what I mean, bro? Bro, you know what the mad thing is, bro? Another team, another team would look at Mount. I like Mount, I'll be honest, but listen, I'm keeping it fair. Another team would look at Mount and be like, yo, let me look at your last 24 months. You had a shit ton of injuries at Chelsea. You've had a shit ton of injuries at Man United. Off you go, mate. 
you're still young enough to have a good career, but it's not a Man United. That's what a ruthless club would do. But Man United won't, because Man United are going to look at him and be like, do you know how unfair it is to let him go when he hasn't even been given a chance? Why has he not been given a chance? Because he was injured in his final season at Chelsea and he was injured in his first season at Man United. Look at the pattern. The sample size is not one month, it is 24 months. Get rid. Man United won't do that. That's what it is, bro. I didn't even know that as well, fam. I'll be real. <laughs> oh, I got 85 likes. It's bad. Oh, it is. It's crazy. Hey, I'll be real, fam. Listen, that took two weeks, two days out of the game, fam. I told you, fam. And then we're tweeting Darth Vader, the pussy old blood. I had to take care of them. But listen, 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 we back, we back, we back. back. What are we saying? A little bit of a different question. Hadj, I'm not from England, but I think Loftus Cheek. Bro, I'll be honest with you, innit? I don't think he goes. England have a lot of players in midfield. The only thing that helps him is he's a very different profile to what they have. But actually, now, is he really? Like, he's just, I'm not going to lie. Like, they'll look at him and a Bellingham and be like, listen, both of you are like, Physical, good ball carriers, rare tear tear. Yeah, bro, he won't play. I'll be honest with you. Like, he couldn't get into the England setup when they were shit. England have a nice team. I'll be, listen, I'll be, this might be the first year I look at England and be like, listen, maybe you can do something. I'll be real. This, this is the first time ever I've looked at England and been like, yo, Foden, Saka, Kane, Watkins. Bellingham, Foden, Declan Rice, Trent. Center half, they lack. I'll be real. You know what it is with England? Left back, center half, goalkeeper is their biggest flaw. It's their biggest flaw. Pickford, Ramsdale, um, Pope. They're all shit for me. They're all shit. Left back, they're all unreliable. Luke Shaw, uh, Chilwell. Center back, I only really look at John Stones. I only really look at John Stones, I'll be honest. And, and I'll be real, like with John Stones, I feel like he's become so accustomed to like playing that step forward central midfielder for Manchester City that like when it comes to actual like box defending, he lacks a little bit, if you know what I mean. Like the way England would use him is very different to the way Manchester City use him. But the way City use him plays to his strengths more. If you know what I mean. So it's like center half who? Maguire, Stones, what? Tamori, Mings. To be fair, Brave, Braveweight is nice, but it's like maybe it's a bit too early to throw him out there on the global stage. But that that's where, well, I'll be real. England having Southgate is always what's going to hold them back. That brother, all right, if we ever get Southgate. Bro. <laughs> well, if I ever get Southgate, yeah. Every fucking live show, every live stream, I'm going to have my Darth Vader mask on. I swear, I will be Darth Vader. If he stays here for five years, you man will never, ever see my sexy face again. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. I will be permanently Darth Vader if we get Southgate. Good lead, my bro. What are we saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh man that's what it is bro but it's the revisionism fam that's what it is oh man anyway that's how the game goes man Keita what are you saying fam Farido what are you saying 4 point oh man 4.11 I don't even know how much I'm on but yeah 5k soon 5k soon Love from Barbados. Oi, I need to go to Barbados one day. I'll be real. I need to. I must be there. <laughs> Bro, I swear, if Man United ever think about getting him, oh my God. That's what it is. But that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, but listen, listen, lads. That is me, fam. 85 likes. Not too bad. 
Yeah, it was supposed to be an hour long, but it turned out to be an hour 40. Yeah, time flies when you're having fun, as always. I'll be back tomorrow. I don't know what. I might do a ranking video. I'll be honest. I might do a ranking video. Like maybe like rank top five managers. I don't really want to talk about Man United tomorrow. Uh, Yeah, I might do something like that. But for the time being, big up everybody that has tuned in. I appreciate it, as always. You know what it is, bro? It's just... You know what it is, fam? It's because, like, halfway through a video, I'd always lose my shit over something. And when I lose my shit over a comment, I end up going, like, half... Like, who would have ever thought I'm talking about priorities? Not me, fam. I just want... I, I have four points. I wanted to talk about four points and leave. Yeah, next thing you know, I'm talking half an hour about football priorities. Yeah, but listen... Listen, listen, that's just how it goes, man. That's why I need to start making shorter content. Because some people like the short content, some people like the long content. But anyways, it is what it is. But big up Suki, everyone else in the house. I will catch you guys tomorrow for sure. So have a good evening. And I will yeah, catch you guys tomorrow.